Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, in this lecture today we are going to discuss Swami Vivekananda, his life, uh, philosophy and uh, the way he tried to revitalize Indian life. So, through the works and writings of uh, Swami Vivekananda, we will focus more on his ideas about revitalization of Indian life. So, uh, he was a sannyasi, a renouncer a uh, traveler including India or abroad and was also a deeply a spiritual uh, person and considered as a religious and a spiritual guru of modern India. And he remains one of the very significant figure in terms of uh, uh, conceptualizing modern Indian um, political condition and how to um, improve the degraded or degenerated status of Indian masses. So, uh, in uh, Vivekananda and his philosophy, we find almost simultaneously two contradictory uh, strands of uh, politics or activism or thinking present simultaneously. On the one hand, he was deeply engaged with uh, Vedic text or Vedanta or um, um, Hinduism, uh, revival of Hinduism and the spiritual uh, search or search for truth and also uh, the experience or realization of God or divine in each one of us. So, on, uh, on the one hand, he has this urge of a spiritual experience or attainments and on the other hand, he was deeply uh, uh, deeply uh, and emotionally attached with the condition or material economic condition of the masses and he wanted to uplift uh, those masses to revitalize the, uh, uh, the Indian, um, Indian nation or that he wanted to do through the uh, uh, spiritual side of the, um, uh, of the uh, human being or the individual. So, the spirituality which he uh, considered as the basis for the regeneration of nation including India and also to uh, enable the um, uh, possible or the cordial relationship between East and the West or other, uh, or other religions. So, the spirituality he defines not in a narrow uh, religious uh, sense of the term, but something which is broader something which enables the man to connect with the larger larger self or the supreme self. So, this kind of thought we have uh, examined and discussed when we have discussed uh, Rabindranath Tagore, Arvind Ghos and uh, to some extent uh, in Raja Ram Mohan Roy also. So, um, Vivekananda represent uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, tradition uh, and he in a way was influenced by Raja Ram Mohan Roy and his approach uh, to religion, spirituality and also the uh, scientific and rational articulation of religion, uh, religion, spirituality or the human um, dignity and the role of freedom of priests, liberty and etcetera. So, Vivekananda was influenced to a great extent by the thought of Ram Mohan Roy and he considered him as the most pragmatic. Um, modern political thinkers of India and the father of Indian renaissance. So, in Vivekananda and his thought we will find all um, strengths and uh, that becomes a challenge when um, uh, you have a selective uh, interpretation of uh, Vivekananda 
by different schools of political thought, be it uh, conservative to radical to the Marxist to the socialist and many others. So, um, uh, Vivekananda is open to different kind of interpretation because of this involvement and engagement with different and often contradictory, um, contradictory uh, issues and concerns in his life. So, he is not just a spiritual religious leader, but he was a uh, sim uh, sympathetic or very actively involved in the um, uh, revival or improving the political material and economic condition of the masses. And at the same time, he is considered as the prophet of Indian nationalism. Uh, many scholars argue because of his um, belief or faith in the uh, revival of India and uh, that can lead to the spiritual enlighten enlightenment of the uh, world as a whole. So, he wanted India to uh, assert as an independent country based on this uh, a spiritual, uh, a spiritual side of its um, existence or its identity and that can be the uh, solid uh, basis on which Indian nation can emerge and assert its independence and human uh, can um, attain or realize one's uh, dignity. So, uh, Vivekananda's uh, philosophy is in different directions. We are going to focus more on what he has to say on religion and more so how religion and spirituality can be the basis of Indian nation and how India can revitalize itself. So, that is the focus of our um, uh, lecture through Vivekananda. To begin with, we can understand his political or philosophical standing through this quotation by Sister Nivedita where she writes that he was not politicians, he was greatest of nationalists. So, politics in a sense for um, Vivekananda, the way it was uh, practiced was something merely as a talk or something which do not really help in the uh, improvement or empowerment of the uh, common masses and he wanted to ensure uh, and uh, uh, wanted to uh, resolve or provide solution which will help in the improvement of the material condition of the large number of masses, not a kind of um, very limited group of people engaged in uh, merely talk or discussion about the condition of the masses. So, in that sense, he considered himself not as a politician or uh, politics, he considers something narrowly defined as, in, uh, as a nonsense which does not really lead to uh, improvement of the masses. So, he wanted the um, um, empowerment of the masses and that he wanted to do through this spiritual or uh, religious uh, assertion or igniting of um, um, uh, the divine presence in each one of uh, the millions of Indians. So, therefore, his creed or his uh, nationality was, uh, was Indian. So, he was deeply um, disturbed by the uh, experiences he had while he was traveling length and breadth of the nation, meeting its uh, a particular section of people well, uh, well off and uh, uh, prosperous, but the millions of um, um, masses living in subhuman condition and that becomes something which uh, he wanted to resolve and for that masses to fight against the British, fight against the oppression of any kind, that can happen only through the spiritual regeneration of the masses. So, um, we will discuss this point more. So, in his thought, you see him as a greatest of the nationalist and yet he was a spiritual and the religious leader. Vivekananda was one of the foremost nation builders of India and his ideas greatly influenced many nationalist leaders including Tagore, Nehru, Gandhi and even in contemporary politics you see um, um, many um, politicians um, uh, in, uh, taking inspiration from, um, from Vivekananda and uh, his writings and especially for the youth of India, uh, Vivekananda remains an icon or a source of inspiration to, uh, to solve the multitude of problems and challenges that India is facing in contemporary times. So, uh, since the very beginning, um, Vivekananda uh, become a kind of icon or a youth icon for, uh, uh, for many generation, including many nationalist 
uh, leaders and therefore he is uh, considered also as a prophet of Indian nationalism. He gave the uh, philosophy or the spiritual basis or sound basis of Indian, uh, Indian uh, nationhood or nationalism. He was a modern figure and why uh, he was a unique, uh, uh, unique uh, leader or um, uh, thinker precisely because when he is tackling modern challenges that India was facing, he did it through the uh, connection, through the deep engagement with the pre-modern or uh, traditional uh, spiritual Indian civilization and that becomes the source of his articulation, his uh, understanding of Indian nationalism and that's, uh, uh, that, that is the way he connect with the masses. So, one of the uh, interpretation in Vivekananda was that the religion and religiosity is vital for Indians from their birth to their death and without understanding that religiosity one cannot understand Indian society, Indian religion or Indian way of life and uh, therefore, he wanted uh, to, uh, to reignite that uh, religiosity or understanding of uh, religious practices devoid of uh, many evil practices that has happened like idol worship or temple or whatever. So, for him uh, religion and religiosity is more a spirit rather than its form or theories however beautiful or contemplative that may be. So, uh, so uh, Vivekananda connect with the traditional Indian self through his reinterpretation of Vedanta or Advaita Vedanta which is also called practical Vedanta or uh, new Vedanta which we will discuss. So, uh, in that sense Vivekananda gave the uh, philosophical basis of Indian Indian nationalism and he uh, he continued to inspire many generation of national leaders including many uh, leaders in contemporary India. So, in his thought first he believed that movement and change were signs of life and stillness is a sign of death or decadence. So, he emphasized on fresh interpretation of tradition to face the new world with new social and political requirements. That is the kind of intellectual philosophical contribution of Vivekananda which he want to do by connecting or reconnecting with the uh, traditional past and reinterpreting it in a way which enables uh, the country, the community to face the present or the challenges of present new, uh, new world. And uh, so, do through challenging or uh, through changing oneself and not by remaining stagnant or still. So, for him the change or the movement is the sign of life for any uh, society or any community and a stillness or a stagnation is the sign of death. He wanted India to change, he wanted India to revive itself to face the modern challenges. The second is he believed that the change has to come in the minds of the men first to change the world. So, here he in a way assert the individual involvement in uh, the change that may happen or that should happen uh, in a country or in a community, where the change is not something which comes from outside or it is imposed from above, but it should come before uh, before it comes the change should first comes in the minds of the people. So, the um, belief, the conviction in something or some idea should, um, uh, should develop only when individual or his self, his atomistic self is uh, convinced or persuaded by the validity of that, uh, that idea or the desirability of that, uh, that idea. So, for social, religious or political change to occur, it is necessary that change should first occur in the minds of people. There should be proper education or uh, transmission of ideas which enables the individual to subject himself or herself to a particular idea and then that will lead to uh, transfor uh, transformative changes in the society, in the community and in the religion. So, therefore, uh, 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 
despite of his uh, tilt towards religion, spirituality or um, um, such thing, you also find in him the uh, tenets of modern political uh, uh, theorization or thinking where he believes that the change is necessary or inevitable and also the, to change uh, to happen one requires change in the mind of people before it happens in the real world. Now, um, Vivekananda also constantly tries to redefine himself and his ideas about life and its objectives. So, in the very beginning he was influenced by western thinkers like Kant, Hegel, uh, idea of Spencer and many others. He was also influenced by uh, Brahma Samaj or Sadharan Brahma Samaj or uh, the ideas of Raja Ram Mohan Rai. At the same time, there was a uh, tendency or the urge towards a spiritual search or the uh, finding the meaning of uh, meaning of life. So, in Vivekananda, so uh, on the other hand, he was also deeply engaged with the cause or the goal of objective of the Indian nationhood or to define Indian uh, nationhood on the basis of Hinduism. At the same time, he was also in favor of uh, East-West dialogue or cordial conversation. So, uh, in Vivekananda, he uh, constantly tries to redefine himself or ref reformulate his ideas on life and uh, its objective and therefore, he remains open or subjected to different interpretation and uh, there you will find many works reducing him merely as a religious or a spiritual guru while on many other kind of works uh, project him as a um, uh, leader of Hindutva or Hinduism. Still other many, um, many works and scholars project him as a sacred, but secular uh, or accommodative or inclusive uh, religious, uh, religious figure. Still many others project him as a prophet of modern Indian nationalism. So, in Vivekananda you have all strengths, uh, strengths or possibility of interpretation because of his uh, constant redefining and reformulating his own ideas and, and uh, objectives of life. So, Swamiji's aim had been uh, the reconstruction of humanity on the spiritual found foundation. So, here humanity is much beyond uh, the limits of Indian nation or geographical boundary of India. So, he wanted to create or, um, or constitute a community of uh, the world where all the religions, all the uh, different sectarians or other kinds of viewpoints can live with each other with harmony and peace. So, <coughs> and that is possible only through the uh, spiritual foundation. Um, and he quote, um, and he writes, and I quote, that let every man and woman and child without respect of caste or birth, weakness or strength, hear and learn that behind the strong and the weak, behind the high and the low, behind everyone, there is that infinite soul assuring the infinite possibility and the infinite capacity of all to become great and good. Let us proclaim to every soul, arise, awake, stop and stop not till the goal is reached. So, you may have come across this quotation often quoted, re-quoted, argued, re-argued, interpreted, reinterpreted in so many works of life, arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. So, that becomes a famous quotation of uh, Vivekananda and inspire a lot of students, youth and activist leaders, but it connects with uh, the larger, um, larger uh, project. Uh, Vivekananda was uh, envisioning that was beyond any kind of caste and creed, weakness or strength, high and low. He wanted everyone to realize that behind all of them, different caste, different creed, high and low, there is one infinite soul which assured the infinite possibility and infinite capacity of each one of them to become great and good. So, this possibility of becoming great and good is not confined to a particular caste or a particular creed or a few selective individual, but it is open to all. Only thing is that everyone has to realize the uh, 
uh, presence of this infinite soul behind him and when one realizes such existence then one can attain this um, uh, greatness and goodness so he pro proclaimed that then every soul should aspire to arise first to uh, to uh, acknowledge or to remember the presence of these souls and then keep on thinking or articulating or engaging with that realization and then continuously strive to reach that goal of becoming good and great and that is possible for each one of us without any distinction of caste, creed and birth. So, that is the uh, message of Vivekananda for creating the world, uh, uh, world community or uh, unity uh, among different religious groups and all kind of sectarian belief systems. Now, uh, to briefly uh, discuss about his life and times, um, he was born in an aristocratic family in Calcutta in 1863 and he was greatly influenced by his own parents where his father was more a kind of rational thinker or a kind of agnostic towards religious practices and belief systems as was the case with many aristocratic family of their times and his mother was of religious temperament. So, uh, in Vivekananda also this belief in accepting something only when it is scientifically or rationally persuasive enough and yet searching the true or the larger meaning of life comes from maybe uh, his uh, 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 learning or his uh, inspiration from his parents where father was more rational, scientific or agnostic to religious thing but mother was a more uh, religious te temperament. So, during his earlier um, uh, early years, he became familiar with western philosophy and science and refused to accept anything without rational and pragmatic taste. So, Vivekananda developed that uh, rational scientific outlook from the very beginning and especially after his readings of Hegel, Kant, Herbert, Spencer and many others. But at the same time, there was another part of his mind which was drawn to a spiritual ideals meditations and non-attachment, the kind of abstract, contemplative and speculative thinking about the larger meaning of life, larger objective of life. And yet, he was also deeply influenced by the uh, rational scientific, uh, scientific uh, um, uh, method of explaining or understanding uh, anything including social, political uh, and religious life. And from the uh, early age, he uh, developed some interest in debates and discussions about social reforms, religious reforms, meaning of life, nation, struggle for uh, independence and also joined Sadharan Brahma Samaj, established by Raja Ramon Roy and Freemasons Lodge. And he excelled in his uh, education, in his academic life as well, but yet he constantly searched for the larger meaning or the foundational uh, ideas of uh, ideas of life. So, in a way Vivekananda uh, and his life was a constant search for the uh, meaning of life which remains permanent, which is absolute. There is no illusion, there is no, uh, no, uh, no uh, relativity there. So, uh, the true meaning or the exact meaning of life, uh, the genesis of life or such a spiritual questions lead him to constantly search for new gurus and new um, new thinkers and through debates and discussions of his time uh, he came to know, uh, know about the rama krishna rama uh, krishna he was a spiritual leader so while searching for a man who could directly demonstrate the reality of god so the search of god what is in in individual being which remains permanent, which uh, transcend the limits of biological or the physical existence of human being. So, in search of that question, he come to know about Sri Ramakrishna, who was born as Gadadhar Chattopadhyay. He was a mystic leader or a spiritual guru. So, at the age of 19, he came in contact with Sri Ramakrishna and was immediately attracted by his saintliness or simplicity or childish innocence. So, uh, however, in the beginning he was a skeptical of many practices of Ramakrishna like his trance where he thought about 
realization of God is possible uh, through experience and it cannot be rationally, uh, rationally explained. So, uh, for such kind of practices and beliefs in Ramakrishna, Vivekananda was very uh, skeptical in the beginning but gradually he be, he became his uh, disciple and uh, admire his uh, his uh, spiritual uh, learnings and expertise so from ramakrishna one of the Im, uh, important instructions he received was to see god with eyes open and not with eyes closed so god is to be seen in the humanity in the larger humanity and not in temples, not in theories, not, and, uh, not in texts. So, this uh, teaching enables Vivekananda to understand the service to men was the most effective form of worship. So, the humanity for him, the God is the human being. So, serving the human being is equal to serving the God or serving to uh, uh, greatest and most effective form of worship. So, Vivekananda uh, began to realize or began to expand the spirituality in men and uh, manifest that uh, spirituality in men through this uh, understanding that service to men and not to a book, not to a form or not to an idol, not to a um, uh, temple is what constitute uh, religiosity or a spirituality or effective form of worship. So, that is that way he reinterpreted many traditional beliefs about uh, religion and religious practices also. So, after the death of Ramakrishna, Vivekananda travelled all over India and became deeply distressed at the sight of the material degradation of the masses. And then he decided to dedicate his life to the upliftment of the common man. That becomes the lifelong objective of Vivekananda, where he wanted India to attain freedom, not just for the sake of freedom, but also to revitalize the infinite source of strength in each one of us that is based on the spiritual uh, side of it and he constantly tries to awaken that spiritual side of uh, the millions or teeming millions. So, uh, for uh, Vivekananda, uh, he was a um, um, uh, great traveler and he traveled length and breadth of uh, country from Himalaya to Kanyakumari and there is a rock in um, in Kanyakumari which is also uh, called Vivekananda rocks and so he he was uh, not uh, someone confined to the religious text or treatises but also experiences life in its varied uh, in various various mundane mundane forms and uh, especially among the common um, materially degenerated masses he wanted to uh, uh, revive them empower them through the uh, our uh, spiritual awakening in their life. So, the Vivekananda that we are more familiar uh, emerged around 1890s and uh, the Swami's wandering at that time was to know the condition of that time. So, he was someone wanted to understand life in its various manifestations including in different forms in India and also in abroad and he took a journey to America for this purpose. In 1897 to spread the message of spirituality, he started Ramakrishna Math or mission at Belur, which remains a very sacred place even uh, today for many visitors from India and abroad to understand the lives and teachings of Vivekananda. They visit the Belur Math in Kolkata and two years later he set up the Advait Ashram in the Himalayas. Uh, he also wanted Velur Mat, which is the headquarter of the Ramakrishna mission, which is uh, spread across the world in different continents. He wanted to turn it into a complete university where Western science and Eastern mysticism would be studied side by side. So, here is Vivekananda, who is deeply embedded in the uh, religious or the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta or Hinduism was open to accommodate uh, uh, western western science and uh, acknowledge the significance of modern modern science in the upliftment or the empowerment of the modern society and he wanted Belur mud to be uh, turned into a complete university where along with eastern mysticism or um, a spiritual um, uh, uh, tradition um, modern science 
should also be taught. So, the uh, Vivekananda uh, became more uh, 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 famous or attained unparalleled fame of that time, because uh, precisely because of this speech at the uh, parliament of religions. And the basic message in this speech is this quotation which he takes from Indian spiritual text or treatises, where he quote that as different streams having their source in different places, all mingle their water in the sea. So, O Lord, the different paths which men take through different tendencies, various through they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to thee. So, that means the life in its various forms, the practices, the road, uh, the path that one follows, it ultimately to one and the same uh, same supreme uh, supreme being and uh, that uh, uh, message which he uh, gave in his speech to uh, the parliament of uh, world religions becomes a kind of uh, philosophical basis for accommodating the differences or differences in the religious practices or belief systems and yet developing a solid brotherhood or uh, solidarity uh, despite of such uh, differences and creating a, uh, a uh, relations or human relations which transcend these sectarian belief systems or practices because of this realization and which he quotes from the Hindu text and that is why he asserted or many times um, uh, very confidently put forth that the Hinduism is the mother of all religion or the um, uh, um, uh, greatness of uh, Hindu religion, which can accommodate all kind of uh, uh, differences. So, um, Swami Vivekananda was, uh, when he went to uh, this parliament of uh, religion, uh, he was a young unknown Hindu monk and delivered an important address about the universal tolerance. This universal tolerance can come only with the realization of the ultimate reality of all kind of life and belief system. So, address about this universal tolerance at the first world's parliament of religions at the Alt Art Institute of Chicago on September 11, 1893. His profound knowledge of Indian and Western philosophy, which he studied before he become a monk or world renouncer and complemented with his profound knowledge of Indian uh, spiritual or intellectual tradition impressed the fellow delegates and scholars and the American press gave him cons consistently good coverage. This was his first direct contact with the West and during this time he is assumed the monastic name Vivekananda. So, Vivekananda was born as a Narendranath Datta and from Narendranath Datta he, uh, he acquired this um, a monastic name Vivekananda, which means bliss of discerning knowledge. In this uh, platform enables him to reach not just the global audience or uh, uh, express or uh, uh, make them familiar about Indian tradition or Hin Hinduism or the message of uh, Hinduism to the world, but also instantly help him to uh, reach to the millions of masses back home in India. And when he returned from the, um, uh, from the parliament of um, uh, religion, he was given uh, a um, unmatched uh, reception um, when he reached the uh, source of India. So, uh, in America, his mission was both national and international to express the vital or the force of a spiritual expertise in America and also to develop the brotherhood among different uh, religious followers or the uh, belief, uh, belief systems. So, the compelling motive of his uh, coming to America was to know the science and technology of the West and he also wanted to share with the American people certain uh, spiritual knowledge cherished in India which he thought might help the waste to overcome its anxiety and restlessness. So, with his experience of waste, he realizes inherent or the inner restlessness in a modern western self and he thought that that can be cured with learning this is old 
spiritual wisdom or knowledge of India and that how he thought India can contribute in the empowerment or the spiritual awakening of the humanity at large and at the same time he wanted Indians to learn the uh, scientific or the technological development of the West and this scientific and rational temperament even about the religion and religious practices is something which Vivekananda constantly explained to his followers and millions of students he addressed. So, the other missions he performed there was to remove the mistaken notions about some of the misconceptions or misinterpretation of Indian religion and belief systems in the mind of many Westerners in, including Americans. So, Vivekananda here one can find is someone who is scientifically and very rationally putting forward the uh, strength of um, or the true meaning of Hinduism which was caricatured by many uh, colonial, uh, colonial administrators, scholars and the Christian missionaries and relegated it merely as a kind of false belief or uh, irrational uh, practices or belief systems. So, uh, Vivekananda was, uh, was uh, responding to that kind of caricaturing of Hinduism merely as a irrational belief systems or practices. Uh, and it has acquired uh, many evil, uh, evil rituals and practices which we have discussed while we, uh, we were discussing about Raja Ram Mohan Roy. So, Vivekananda was also reinterpreting Hinduism in a more scientific and rational way and, uh, uh, and expressing or uh, putting forth the true or uh, true uh, or the correct meaning of Hinduism. So, for uh, many scholars the caste system was the result of Hinduism, but he was someone who believed and uh, responded that Hinduism is not at the fault. It is because of the uh, uh, those who are priestly class or those who, uh, uh, who receive uh, or profit from these kind of practices, they maintain this kind of hierarchy. In fact, Hinduism for him is something which ensures or uh, uh, sanction the highest dignity to the individual despite of his caste and, uh, and uh, creed. So, uh, for Vivekananda the task was to reassert or reinterpret Hinduism um, uh, and distance it from the dogmas or many irrational beliefs and rituals which had developed uh, after many uh, centuries of degeneration or the foreign rule. So, Vivekananda presented in a very simple language the philosophy of Advaita Vedanta. Advaita Vedanta is the monism that belief in one supreme truth that is Brahman, one Brahma and we are all manifestation of the same one supreme self. So, his uh, uh, interpretation of Advaita Vedanta is also known as practical Vedanta or new Advaita Vedanta which becomes the inspiring philosophy for many nationalist leaders. So, in his views man was no different from reality or God. It was just that his delusion did not allow him to gauge this supreme truth. He believed that a man's action and thoughts should be guided by principle of the divinity of the soul and the solidarity of mankind. So, for him and the way he interpreted Advaita Vedanta for millions and not just for a priestly class or a selected group, uh, the um, understanding of man as the manifestation or connected with this supreme reality or God, this realization do not come to the masses because of their various delusions. So, what comes after life? What is the significance of soul? Will soul uh, perish with the uh, death of the body? So, these kind of um, uh, discourses he explains through um, this, um, uh, this understanding of man which is not different from the reality or the God. So, the man he see, uh, see God in man himself. So, Nar Narayan and such, uh, such expression in Vivekananda comes from this kind of interpretation of man. So, he wanted this delusion which obstruct the individual to realize this supreme reality or supreme truth to be removed and that can be removed when man's action and thoughts is guided by this 
divinity of soul, soul do not perish with the body message of Gita and many other texts and therefore, the ultimate objective is the solidarity of mankind not divided on the basis of caste, creed or even nation or nationality. So, that is his conception of uh, man which he considers as the manifestation of divine himself and to remove the delusion one has to guide one's action and thoughts and uh, constantly engage or understand this divinity of soul and that will then enable the individual to cross the boundaries of religion, belief systems or the sectarian ideas about God and forms of God and etcetera and develop the solidarity among the mankind. So, this philosophy believes that the non-dualistic ultimate reality, the non-dualistic, so the ultimate reality which is one is non-dualistic, there is no uh, illusion, there is no duality there, there is a absolute supreme monistic, uh, uh, monistic self or Brahman is free from dissensions and conflict and is conductive to the welfare of uh, uh, welfare of all. So, this realization of uh, one as uh, the supreme self and all of us are part of that supreme self will enable us to forge a solidarity or a uh, brotherhood which will uh, help in the welfare of one and all and not any kind of hierarchy, not any kind of dichotomies, not any kind of dissensions, conflicts or violence. So, that uh, uh, philosophy enables one to realize that interconnections in interpersonal relationships. So, for him the, the task of Vedanta was to break down privileges or any kind of hierarchy, any kind of conflicts that result out of that hierarchy or the privilege that should be broken down and that is the true message of Vedanta for Vivekananda and why his philosophy of Vedanta is also called practical Vedanta is also because it is not limited to merely contemplative or speculative uh, practices, but it actually enables the millions. So, his task or Ramakrishna mission or many uh, initiatives he undertook was to uh, spread this message of Advaita Vedanta among the millions or and millions of masses which we are not uh, 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 able to uh, understand or engage with uh, this kind of thought. So, the Vedanta for him is a more practical approach to break down any kind of privileges and hierarchy and the conflict that is the result of such privileges and hierarchy. So, the idea that one man is born superior to another has no meaning in Vedanta, that is the message of Vivekananda. He suggested that the inequalities were not endemic to individuals or institutions, they were more often than not a reflection of the circumstances they had been pl placed in. So, the rise of inequalities or hierarchy is result not of the belief systems or the religious practices, but because of the circumstances, the human material socio-economic conditions produce such inequalities and hierarchies and which can be broken down once human being or the individual realizes that supreme truth which do not uh, uh, which do not uh, believe in any superiority or inferiority uh, among and between the individuals. So, uh, Ved Vedanta for him uh, then is a kind of uh, active philosophy to bring social equality, to bring equality among the mankind and then develop the solidarity among, among them. So, <coughs> his understanding of Vedanta asserts India's pluralistic culture that means Vedanta and its philosophy realizes the differences in the different practices, different belief systems, but ultimately realizes the supreme truth that we are all part of same uh, one singular non-dualistic uh, uh, supreme truth and that enables the people to reach the same goal through different paths. So, they may follow different paths, different practices, but ultimate reality, the ultimate journey is to reach to this one supreme God. So, to further quote for Vivekananda, each soul is potentially divine, the goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling natures external and internal, do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy, by one or more or all of these 
and be free. This is the whole of religion. For him, the understanding or interpretation of religion is not sectarian. In believing some things, whether that something is God or an idol or a book or a theory or a anything. So, um, uh, so basically till here what he is saying that the um, uh, each soul, there is no uh, bar, there is no selection, there is no privilege in which soul is potential to realize this divine. For Vivekananda, each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within from uh, one's own self. That means, it should not be controlled, imposed or persuaded by external forces. right? And this goal of realization of divinity within is possible through work or worship and psychic control of the uh, control or philosophy. That means, uh, different kind of yoga he was preaching, karma yoga, jnana yoga or Raja Yoga or different forms he was saying that one can attain this divinity within by one or more or all of these and the idea is to be free. And this is for him religion. That is the whole religion for Vivekananda realizing within the manifestation of divinity and that realization can come through any of these ways. So, further he writes doctrines or dogmas or rituals or books or temples or forms are but secondary details. Religion is based upon faith and belief and in most cases consists only of different set of theories and this is the reason why there is a different in form. So, this realization different the secondary details of any religion based on books, temples, forms of worship, doctrines or dogmas is based upon different in theories and therefore, it may appear uh, different from each other. But ultimately, if the purpose is to understand or realize this and be free, which is uh, the whole, uh, whole religion, then these forms are uh, merely secondary, ultimate uh, truth or the absolute truth is the realization of divinity within which is potential possible for each soul. So, therefore, he writes that the Christian is not to become a Hindu or a Buddhist, nor a Hindu or a Buddhist to become a Christian, but each must assimilate the spirit of others and yet preserve his individuality and grow according to his own law of growth. So, that is how one can attain oneself, be free without converting to any other religion or any one form of religion which is considered as true religion. For him, these are different ways, different paths of realization. The ultimate objective is to realize the divinity within without any external uh, intervention or controlling the nature. So, uh, for that one need not to convert from one religion to other form. So, one form of worship to another form of worship will not help in realization of this ultimate truth. That comes only when one realizes from within this divine manifestation and that is the basis of religion and the spirituality in the individual life, in the life of community or in the life of humankind that, that Vivekananda was trying to preach through his reinterpretation of um, uh, reinterpretation of Advaita Vedanta which is also considered as practical Vedanta. Many of his followers regarded him as the key founders of modern Hinduism, especially the revival of Hinduism and the belief and the self-confidence of the masses in the Hinduism as the basis of nation, as the basis of community. So, in the first phase of Indian national movement, you will find many such uh, religious or spiritual gurus reviving the uh, true meaning or reinterpreting the ancient text to, uh, to engage or to respond to the uh, challenges, of, uh, challenges of their time. So, um, Vivekananda, however, was strongly critical of the traditional Hinduism. Traditional Hinduism in a way, the way it was believed and practiced and ritualized and monotony of such practices without uh, connecting to the spirit or a spiritual side of it. Vivekananda was very critical of it, yet through his reinterpretation and his message, he is considered as the founder of modern Hinduism. And there is some contradictory thinking or uh, or interpretation in Vivekananda writing uh, also. So, um, 
uh, when we uh, so first was that he was very critical of many practices and the uh, and the ritualized behavior or monotony of such behavior again when he thinking about the common scripture for india he preferred the vedas or the ancient texts or the Up upanishads however he himself had once identified these as the authority recognized by the hindus alone so what would be the status of other treatises of other religion so that's a kind of inconsistency in his uh, writing despite claiming the hinduism to be the mother and teacher of all other faiths vivekananda's project was to create a european society in india which he called the india's religion so for vivekananda the condition of the masses or the economic material condition of the masses was so worthless that he want uh, the regeneration of india which is possible by creating this european society in india which will uh, be a kind of combination of the ancient indian heritage of a spiritual understanding or the wisdom on the one hand and modern science and technology of the west on the other hand and that combination can regenerate the degrading condition of millions of indian masses so so he wanted to create this european society in india which he thought was possible so vivekananda wanted to create a religion that was rational linear non emotive and masculine so the strength is life and weakness is death so that kind of interpretation of religion or hinduism leave very little space for disorder chaos pain pleasure or emotions so it was a, a hindu world that was detached abstract and ritually pure so he wanted to create india spiritually strong by preferring to the masculine over say feminine or rational over say emotive or uh, or such things so uh, what we uh, find in his interpretation that uh, as uh, nainan samrat pointed out that not only did he interpret hinduism to the west but also interpreted it to india itself so he interpreted vedanta or dwait vedanta in such a way which will enables the indian to respond to solve many of the uh, contemporary challenges and this is for him not merely for the contemplative exercise it has the practical Uh, application in the to the material political and economic life of the people so by focusing on the ancient philosophic past of the hindus he was able to provide an alternative reformative view of hinduism which until then was viewed by india's colonial masters as a religion dominated by cult worship and many irrational practices so foremost contribution of vivekananda was the reassertion of the strength and capability of hinduism to solve not just the degrading condition of the masses but reignite the spiritual side of humanity not just in india but also in the world so contrary to the many colonial masters and their belief about indian religions especially hinduism which they thought as a kind of merely cult worship or consisted of many irrational practices he provided a alternative reformist view of hinduism in his practical vedanta and he was also someone who first introduced different practices of yoga to the west and importantly vivekananda's teachings inspired the struggle to free india from the oppression of the colonial rule so the many scholars believe that his message or his work influenced a great many revolutionaries in india to let down their life to sacrifice their uh, uh, their life their material possessions for the sake of freedom of india from the colonial rule so in addition to this his introduction to the vedanta branch of um, hindu philosophy into america and europe swami vivekananda was influential in the revival of hinduism in india in the 19th and early 20th century so the uh, true message of hinduism uh, he helped in uh, transmitting in europe or in america but also he helped in the revival of hinduism in late 19th century and early 20th, 20th century in india so that is his thought on um, uh, hinduism the role of hinduism in the uh, uh, improve uh, role of hinduism in the everyday life of the people to improve their not just material or the uh, or the economic condition but also the spiritual side of their uh, their uh, their existence so in this lecture if one is to summarize 
the um, uh, message or the um, uh, basis of uh, Vivekananda's philosophy, it is the religion and religiosity and that religion and religiosity for Vivekananda is to attain the uh, divinity or realize the divinity within and that realization may come through many ways, through work, through worship, through uh, Jnana Yoga or through uh, all of these and uh, open to all souls without any discrimination of caste, religion or any kind of uh, sectarian beliefs and uh, uh, so all these forms ultimately lead to that, uh, that realization which is, which is for him the true meaning or objective of life for each human being. So, on this lecture you can refer to some of these works like Vivekananda Cultural Nationalism by Amiya P. Sen from Indian Political Thought Themes and Thinkers by M. P. Singh and Himansu Rai. Also Thinking Community and Nation Relevance of Vivekananda by Gange Mukherjee in India's International Center Quarterly Volume 39 Number 1 and also Swami Vivekananda Sanitary by Swami Nikhilananda Philosophy East and West then writing Vivekananda by Jyotir Mahesh Sharma and also from Vivekananda to Kalat by Madhu Vanti Ghos, Art Institute of Chicago Museum History. So, these are some of the works which you can refer to understand um, Vivekananda and his uh, reinterpretation of Advaita Vedanta or what is also known as uh, new, uh, new Vedanta. So, that is all uh, for today's lecture. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for listening. Thank you.